Hello, my name is Heidi Steffen with Titan TV Inc. I'm here to talk about let the EPG help convert consumers to next gen television. First, can you give a little bit of the Jenna? I'm going to go over what is the EPG? What's the difference between the ESG and PSEP data? What are consumers most excited about with next gen TV? And then how Titan TV, ESG data service and rich media services can help you. So first of all, what is the EPG? What is EPG? As it states, EPG is electronic program guide. So for those consumers at home, they're receiving um, TV from cable, satellite, um, over the air. It's the electronic program uh, guide that tells them what's on, what's on next, and more information about the program. Now that we know what an EPG is, we're gonna go over what's the difference between ESG data and piece of data. So for ATSC 1.0, the metadata that goes out over the air that populates the EPG is PISA. It stands for Program System Information Protocol. This is required by the FCC that all stations carry PISA. Now for ATS 3.0 or Next Gen TV, it's called ESG Data Service. So what the question is, what's the difference between the two? The biggest one is piece up is just the metadata. What's the show? What's the description? With ESG now, you can send additional information from show cards, movie posters, additional links to make a more interactive and more um, experience that consumers are getting today in like OTT. So what is what are consumers most excited about next gen TV? I actually went to the experts. So Pearl TV and MAGA did a research uh, study back in 2018, and they went out to consumers and said, here are the capabilities of what Next Gen TV can bring. What are you most excited about? Now note that some of these capabilities aren't necessarily live today, but they're the capabilities within the standards that are possible. So who did they talk about? They talked about the different ranges and features from the enhanced video, the enhanced audio, which has been a big uh, feature recently, the interactive content, and I'll get really into detail with that, but that includes things from you know, game interaction, the advanced emergency alerting systems, virtual channels, and then the modernized eyes guide. This includes the past program catch up, is what they're calling it, so think of your DVR. It's also talking about more in, on comprehensive schedules. You have the choice now in next gen from on demand and live streaming all within that same menu. And within the studies, they looked at not all sorts of devices from the large screen TV, the mobile phone case, the set top box, the gateway, and even your dongles that you can get today. So what did they find out? And I thought this was fun to kind of read it. One of the things that I thought was interesting about the study is that 3.0 or next gen television actually gets consumers more excited about broadcast programming and TV viewing in general. Um, this is even, it says here, a few cord cutters or cord nevers say that ATSC capabilities could make them start viewing broadcast programming more, more even than what they do today. And then one says here, I don't even know if I get any local channels, which who's, who's heard that before, but 3.0 makes me want to have a broadcast programs available. So, well, what is a cord cutter and what a cord never? This is one thing I learned, not everyone knows. So cord cutter is somebody that originally had cable or satellite and they cut the cord and now they're receiving their television viewing with an antenna over the air. A cord never is someone that's never had cable or satellite before. All they've ever known is either they get it from antenna or they're just doing live streaming or OTT. The thing that they found about this study too is that one of the things that the cord cutters and cord cut nevers were really excited about the capabilities with 3.0 Next Gen TV was the modernized guide. It's especially important to them because it allows them to easily access all the TV content. They can do the customized views, they can do the catch up feature and brings everything in one place. So with that, there were four key themes that emerged from the viewers with these different benefits. One was how easy it was to get the OTA signal, so over the air. One broadcast viewer said, this is simplicity, easy access, all in one. Another one of the features was customization. So it allows them to be able to customize their experience with next gen TV and also have that interactive with the content in ways that they don't have today or in ways that they do with an OTT. 
As one cord cutter said, I like the option to go back and forward in my guide. It was to personalize it towards me and that would be nice. Also, it goes from a passive to active, and I think this is one I'm really excited about. The capability, as one broadcast viewer said, if I'm walking, watching a hiking show, I want to know which mountain they're on. That would make it much more educational, better for me. And I'll go into more details of how that's possible. And then the last one is the inclusivity. It allows viewers to customize the content in a way that makes it more enjoyable for their family and friends. And as the one viewer here that was Spanish said, I'm usually with my family. We go to the living room to watch so we're together. For us, it would be better to have a TV that offers everything that you and your family want. So what, what it was was customization was key with this. So the ability for consumers to customize their user experience was key. As it states here, a few even say that they want to be able to create user profiles within that. So again, you've got your TV. I want to be able to only watch four or five channels. I want them to be the top. I want to be able to schedule um, shows when I have my favorites. They wanted to customize it within. And this is where the ESG data, so again, the metadata that's going out, the guide data, along with the broadcaster app, which is a key theme this at NAB this year, can help provide these features for the consumers. So let's talk a little bit about interactivity on the content. So consumers are always saying they always want to see the second screen. So at home right now, when you're watching TV, as many of you do right now, you have a phone in your hand, right? You have a cell phone, you have an iPad, you have a computer. And how many times have you been watching something and then you go and look it up or you do more research? So one of the nice things about Next Gen Television is the compatible app, the second companion app. So it says viewers still like having the option to cast any activity, pop-ups, and overlays to other devices. So they can continue to watch their TV, but now with that companion app, they're able to get additional information and have that interactive um, that they have with their TV with Next Gen. And it does state here though, however, <laughs> even when paired with the other features such as enhanced audio, um, the guide isn't something that's gonna directly convert them, but with audio, the combination of the features enough for consumers willing to pay for access. And I did learn a stat today that there's 140 next-gen devices out there from television to set-top box to the dongles that consumers can purchase today. So let's talk a little bit about enhanced audio. As I said, this was the feature that consumers were most excited about. I know Pearl T TV did a big push around Christmas with Dolby to really push about some of these enhancements. One of them being the customization to choose different audio tracks from same broadcast program. Um, one of the fun examples that I've noticed is, or I've heard through the industry is, you're watching a NASCAR race and you have your favorite driver wouldn't it be awesome if you could turn out everything else and you just listen to your driver's team talk back and forth and hear all about that? Or let's say you're a big football player and you're watching an NFL game, but you can't stand those announcers. What if you could shut the announcers off and just listen to the crowd as if you were there? These are things that are capable with Next Gen TV. The one thing that I like is actually the ability to then turn down the background noise on whatever you're watching and turn up the dialogue. I mean, how many times have you watched maybe a movie and you're like, what did they say? And you have to go back and forth. This is something that's capable now and next gen television. Here's a little, another Snapchat uh, from the studies. It says interactive content. The viewer said, I feel like as society today, we like having things at our fingertips, literally be able to have all that information. As I stated, one of the other things was that interactive content, right? So one of the things they went through and tried to figure out from consumers, what were the things they were most excited about? One of them was enhanced stats. Now, one word tying TV would be guides. So you'll see here, this is Ellen De DeGeneres. I can now find out in more information about her. I'm watching her, you know, where did she grow up? Things like that. They want to be able to know that. And wouldn't it also be nice to be able to sports stats? You're watching an NFL game, all of a sudden you can get access to sports stats live related to that show. That's all capable in next gen. Other things we talked about here was the ability to, to customize ads and special offers based on viewers' preferences. This is another one that's happening here. So addressable asset. The idea is we all have two different consumers. They're watching the exact same show, but based on 
what they're able to receive back from the broadcaster app, they're different viewers. So now I can send one ad to you and a different ad to you based on what I've collected on first party data. Now let's talk about my favorite topic, modernized guide. They said as in, in this study, it was a second strong second favorite features for many consumers. This resonates more overall with the cord cutters and the cord numbers since they don't have access to cable and satellite today. So just a few of the features that they were excited about. One was the view on demand and live TV programs. So can you imagine you're watching at home and you're looking through the guide what's on and you see a program, maybe you have two programs you wanna watch at the same time. We can't watch them both live at the same time, right? What if you marked one to be able to watch later on video on demand? And you don't have to go to another application. It's all there on your television with your um, next gen. The other one was br uh, browse past Programming, choose to watch shows you've previously aired. DVR, right? This capability now is in with Next Gen Television. Be able to then even rewind, forward. You went to the bathroom quick. The commercials weren't as long as you thought they were. You come back, you missed part of it. You can rewind it, watch it, and still be able to watch live television. The other one was access to additional episodes through broadcast portals or apps. So you just finished watching one of your favorite shows um, and now you wanna watch, you know, it's a syndicated show, now you wanna watch the next episode, but you don't have to wait till tomorrow. You can then through the broadcaster app be able to watch more and learn more about it. And the other thing that I really excited about is that some program descriptions, schedules, ratings, and pictures and other multiple media related to content. So one of the big things between 1.0 and 3.0 today is one I point with the guide is just metadata. It's just descriptions. But with 3.0, you can now send images and show cards. If you go back to when you're watching um, 3.0 or OTT right now, Amazon Prime is a prime example. I can stop a movie that I'm watching on Amazon Prime and I see cast and crew right down there. I can click on one of them, go see more about them, come back and finish watching my movie. That is a capability that will be available with Next Gen TV now. So with all that said, so now I've kind of given you a foundation as far as what consumers are most excited about, some great features that we're excited about. Now I want to talk about what Titan TV's ESG meta, uh, metadata and rich media services can provide. First of all, it's built upon a robust delivery platform utilizing a media store scheduling tool. So it is a web-based tool that allows broadcasters or even networks to build out linear schedules and we're looking to add on VOD as well. But we go a step further than that. So this is the tool that allows you to build all of this. We then push it out to ESG. So again, that is the data that's going over the signal in 3.0 next gen. This now includes channel logos. It includes program metadata, show cards, cast and crew information, cast and crew pictures, and additional links. So back to that study when they talk about that interactive content, you know, you have a program. Again, maybe it's a local um, cooking show and you want to then be able to send them to me maybe on a sponsor's website that then has all that information on that that could be included in the ESG data feed if the broadcaster app is then be able to display it so just some of the capabilities that, that are available all of this can then be built within our media star scheduling tool it is an online based web tool that as long as you have internet log in a password you can access it anywhere there's a lot of features that also allows you to quickly add a program and then when you hit publish, it'll automatically update the ESG data feed or update the guide on your website. It just puts the control back into the broadcaster's hands of what's airing and the description that's going out with it. We also provide a client media manager logo. So now in 3.0, you can send out show cards, you can send out images. Now you also have control on what they look like. You have a local show that's coming up. Maybe it's talking about a big um, mayor debate that's gonna happen. You don't have time to get, you know, to the data providers to do it. You're going to do it yourself. Quickly grab an image, throw it into there. And then when you send out the ESG data, that local program looks crisp and just as one of the network programs. So what's next? What I would highly recommend is actually we have several demos going on at NAB this year that are actually using our ESG data. Um, the first one is addressable asset standard um, identification. This is in Futures Park. So I talked about how you can dynamically insert ads. ESG data actually has a play in that because then they know what content is airing. So if I know it's a breaking news and I have a Ford dealer that's going to pay three times more to run an ad after that breaking news than the $5 ad that I have there because it's a low time, I can, through this uh, AAS standard, be able to dynamically insert that ad because the ESG has told me what the program is there. 
Another one is Heartland Video is doing Next Gen Now. Um, again, it's be able to show you those different things, different consumers again, all watching the same program, but one is gonna get delivered a different ad based on the first party data that they're getting from the broadcaster. And that is in the con um, contact e experimental zone. Another one is D2D. They're demonstrating in their broadcaster app um, how you can then with ESG, you be able to see those images, you be able to see the metadata that's in there and the interactivity you can have with that broadcaster app. And last but not least is Media at Hand. Um, they're also demoing a broadcaster app. They're in the ATSC booth. The same thing. You'll be able to see the rich show cards, the interactivity that you're able to do with that, and what we're, what's it possible with Next Gen TV. So I just want to say thank you again for your time today. If you have any questions for me, you can come over and talk to me afterwards. Otherwise, please visit our booth. It's 9415, just not far from the ATSC booth. Thank you again. Thank you.